We are running the registration. Okay. I will share with Professor Morabito my screen. Can you see my slides, Professor? Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. So, good morning to everyone and welcome to the second session of VIPERC 2023 conference. Uh, I am uh, Alessia Merio, I'm the general chair uh, of the event. A uh, warm welcome to all the participants to this second session of the conference. Just to introduce you the conference, um, the second international conference on visual pattern extraction and uh, recognition for cultural heritage understanding aims to be a premier forum for presenting the state of the art, new research, ongoing work, academic and project reports in advanced statistics and machine learning, 3D modeling and simulation, knowledge representation, intelligent systems, information retrieval and software engineering for visual pattern extraction, analysis and recognition to preserve the cultural heritage. This session is characterized by our invited speaker of today, who is Professor Francesco Carlo Morabito. After that, we will have a coffee break and after the coffee break, two presentations of uh, our two authors, and at the end we will close uh, the session and the conference. But now, let me introduce you Professor Francesco Carlo Morabito, who is a full professor in uh, signal processing at the Mediterranean University of Reggio Calabria in Italy. Professor Morabito is a senior member of Tripoli, and he has authored and co-authored over uh, 400 papers in international journals and conference proceedings in machine and deep learning, signal processing and computational intelligence. He has co-authored less than 20 international books, mostly focused on neural networks and machine learning, and held five international patents. He serves as a governor of the International Neural Network Society from 2022 to 2024, and earlier for uh, 12 years, from 2000 to uh, 2012. He has served as the president of the ne Italian Neural Network Society from 28 to 2014. He is the co-chair of the Italian Conference on Neural Networks. And Professor Morabito will discuss about meta-learning approaches to knowledge extraction from patterns in paintings. I express my gratitude and I am honored to present Professor Morabito to the scientific community of Viberg. So thank you very much, Professor, and please, you can start your talk. Thank you very much, Professor Amelio, Amelia, um, Alessia Amelio. I am uh, very pleased uh, to be here uh, to present my uh, invited talk. Uh, uh, it is a pity that I cannot be there uh, also for the beauties of the place, but also for meeting all of you. Um, I um, will present uh, um, um, something regarding an ongoing work uh, that uh, um, are using uh, uh, many uh, aspects of my previous works, in particular on uh, um, painting analysis. I'll uh, start to share my presentation. Okay, please let me know if uh, you can see the presentation. Yes, Professor, we can see it. Okay, uh, as, as you mentioned, the uh, meta learning approaches to knowledge extraction from patterns in paintings. Um, I um, have seen a paper on The Guardian recently uh, regarding the problem of uh, 
creating uh, the, the, this possibility of creating art by uh, generative uh, artificial intelligence uh, and other aspects. And uh, th there are a lot of works uh, made by many uh, neural network companies for uh, uh, that are able to generate uh, image. For example, in this image, we, uh, you can see some uh, uh, patterns uh, that uh, refers to, for example, Van Gogh, but also uh, other uh, surrealistic uh, artists. And uh, um, it is clear that uh, I would like to first uh, uh, remember that uh, we are talking uh, uh, about uh, digitized images, not exactly paintings. Uh, of course, uh, this is a, a very important difference. Uh, um, in, uh, in this paper, I've seen uh, this uh, uh, statement, if a cloud looks like uh, a bird, the network will make it uh, look more like a bird. This in turn will make the network recognize the bird even more strongly on the next pass and so forth until a highly detailed bird appears, uh, seemingly out of nowhere. This is uh, uh, how neural networks and in particular machine learning and deep learning uh, works. Uh, so uh, we are now speaking uh, of uh, the bird, but in the, in, in, in the, at the same time, uh, some uh, server in the cloud is uh, updating the knowledge on the bird. Um, of course, uh, um, it is not uh, uh, so simple to uh, analyze paintings like, for example, uh, uh, general images, natural images, and so on. So uh, the objectives of the present work are mainly um, define, define some uh, quantitative measures that allows us to classify uh, paintings. Uh, these uh, uh, quantitative measures can help to distinguish automatically different styles of paintings in particular by extracting specific patterns corresponding to styles and to authors. Uh, can we learn meta-knowledge from knowledge extracted with uh, machine learning and deep learning approach? Uh, in particular, I'll present a specific form of measure which is based on information theoretic uh, complexity. And uh, I'll show uh, how we are using now in our going work uh, to uh, implement uh, meta-analysis, so meta-learning in techniques like uh, uh, few-shot learning, where we have only a limited set of examples. I have to say that uh, most of the results that uh, we are uh, achieving with uh, uh, the Online, uh, the cloud analysis is related uh, to uh, millions of uh, images, for example, of birds. But in the case of uh, uh, paintings, uh, we have a limited number of uh, images uh, related uh, to each author, let's say in the, in the order of 100, uh, not 1 million. So uh, we have also to say that uh, the same author change his style uh, along uh, the, his history. So it's not so easy to extract uh, general patterns from uh, uh, paintings. So uh, the so-called deep learning revolution in painting analysis uh, um, can be done, but considering probably uh, the concept of meta-learning. Um, in particular, I'll show you uh, some concept related to uh, the method uh, which is called model agnostic meta learning and uh, a recent development uh, which is called multiple domain uh, meta agnostic model agnostic machine learning. In this case, we will use uh, the uh, complexity measure that I'll show you in the framework of few-shot learning. 
Uh, normally, we uh, in uh, a classification problem, uh, we evaluate the classification accuracy uh, in uh, on, of course, in, on fresh data in generalization. Uh, so the performance are strictly related to the intrinsic characteristics of the data. Uh, so to evaluate and make the correct choice of uh, the model for classification, we need to understand the data. Um, of course, the so-called data-driven uh, method uh, uses the data uh, without uh, knowing it. Then we need, uh, I, I, I suggest here, to make a previous analysis uh, by extracting specific features for uh, having uh, a better uh, recognition and classification of patterns. Uh, I've said that uh, painting analysis is a very peculiar problem and uh, uh, different artistic styles uh, represent the current, uh, for example, figurative art, uh, abstract art, surrealism as, as a whole, but it is possible to meet different patterns. And so the discrimination among categories, for example, to determine the style of um, painting, uh, should be based on uh, characteristics uh, uh, shared between different artists. For example, uh, in the case of faces uh, in figurative arts or other styles, you can see that the same uh, subject face is represented in a very different way. So it's difficult for an automatic system to extract um, representative patterns from uh, sets of uh, uh, images like that one. Um, of course, uh, deep learning is best used for uh, image classification, but uh, it is uh, uh, a method that uh, 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 as a problem of heavy research consuming uh, and only, uh, so only recently we had uh, a wide availability of digitized art on the uh, web, in particular the Web Gallery of Arts is a visual museum and uh, it is possible to search for uh, uh, fine art paintings, decorative arts and so on. But uh, as you can see, we have uh, around uh, 50,000 reproductions, which is not a million. Uh, of course, uh, it is also important to take care of the uh, more recent developments on uh, green AI. And so considering uh, the possibility of uh, small sample pattern recognition. Uh, I, I, I list here, I'm listing here a, a, a non-exhaustive list of problems in uh, uh, this kind of problem. For example, classifying the to detect the authorship, uh, which is uh, very important recently. Probably you heard of a possible novel painting of Leonardo. And uh, apart from the experts uh, classification, uh, automatic methods can be seen. I, I present uh, you today the concept of artistic complexity. Um, in particular, the painting is a static object, but uh, it is the result, the final step of a creative process. Um, in terms of uh, signal processing, we can see this creative process as a transformation from an initial uncertainty, which is expressed by so-called Shannon entropy uh, of the palette of colors, uh, to the algorithmic information content of uh, the final image, which is measured uh, basically by the Kolmogorov complexity. Uh, actually, he, uh, we use a different concept of complexity, which is uh, borrowed from brain science, in particular from the concept of neural complexity earlier proposed by Professor Hedelman, uh, Nobel Prize in Medicine. Uh, which uh, con is considering the interplay between the concept of segregation of local areas in the brain and their global integration during the act of perception. 
The neural complexity uh, uses indeed a zero of order measure, the Shannon entropy. And we correct uh, this formula uh, by implementing the so called Zalis entropy, which is a, a novel concept of entropy. In particular, we introduce uh, uh, this concept uh, uh, in the mutual information measure. Uh, and this kind of uh, entropy being an extensive uh, uh, entropy uh, allows us to handle long range interactions, so different parts of the painting. Um, of course, uh, uh, in figurative arts, uh, the object of a representation is simple, correspond to our ordinary visions of the surrounding world. But uh, in abstract art, uh, the representation is left uh, uh, more to the approach uh, chosen by the artist. Uh, in this study, we use uh, uh, as repertoire the normalized histogram of the luminance values of the image. But I'll show you uh, one slide, a slide regarding the possibility of using at the same time the prominence values. And uh, the, in this sense, in, in this information, information theoretical sense, the creative process is basically a selection of a specialized product, the painting, among every possible realization, given the distribution of probability, probability of the repertoire. So, in this, uh, uh, in the concept of artistic complexity, we use the mutual information. Uh, that can be interpreted as a measure of statistical dependence, expressing how much information is provided about the state of a subset by knowing the state of the rest of the system. In this case, uh, Xj is a patch, a patch of the painting, and X minus Xj is the remaining part of the painting. Uh, of course, uh, mutual information um, uh, is high in the case of high entropy and also of uh, uh, when it is high when uh, the two parts we are considering share a large fraction of variance. Uh, so the image uh, that represents the painting is made of a number of elementary components, subsets of different sites, which uh, interact uh, with each other specially. Um, if a painting is composed of multiple segregated elements, this average integration for small subset is low. Uh, it, that, this means that uh, the elements have independent meaning in the context and provide separate sources of information. In, in other uh, paintings, uh, um, we have an organized emerging effects and the average integration for large subsets is high. We can see now some example to um, better understand this concept. Uh, the measure artistic complexity of each paint is computed by uh, the formulas that uh, we are going to see. Uh, the artistic complexity is uh, measured in terms of average mutual information by using an ensemble average of mutual integration values between subsets of uh, given size and uh, their complement. Uh, these are uh, all of the possible bipartitions of the images summed over all subset size. So uh, <clears throat> you can see here the Shannon formula of entropy, then the uh, mutual information between two subsets, and the final expression of the complexity, which is measured as an average uh, uh, is averaged on uh, all of the possible bipartitions of the paintings. By using the Zalis entropy, the definition of artistic complexity can be extended to uh, more complex uh, uh, paintings. In particular, in Zalis entropy, we have a parameter Q, 
In the case of uh, Q equal to one, we uh, got again the Shannon entropy. For Q equal to, we have the Rainy entropy and so on. So just to show you uh, some uh, images, uh, some image related to this concept. Uh, here I, I'm considering the um, composition seven uh, of Kandinsky. You can see uh, below the mutual information in 3D and in 2D by using uh, windows of uh, 16 by 16 and the trend of the mutual information. We got uh, a very high uh, mutual information, which is uh, a, a hallmark of the complexity of the painting we are considering. And also the, the trend is very smooth uh, as a difference with other uh, other paintings. For example, in this case, we have uh, a mutual information which is uh, uh, not so great. And uh, we also have uh, this kind of uh, uh, oscillations, ripples, if you wish, uh, related to the presence of uh, objects like uh, circles in the, uh, in the painting. You can see that this is another uh, painting of Kandinsky, which is very different from the previous one. Uh, the, again, the composition seven, uh, which is a very peculiar painting, because uh, if you uh, analyze the uh, probability distribution, uh, it is basically a uniform probability distribution. Now, uh, just to show you some other possibility, the Piet Mondrian, uh, and Caravaggio Sepoltura di Santa Lucia. And uh, now I wish to show you uh, uh, regarding the so-called Mona Lisa of uh, Leonardo da Vinci, how the algorithm works. As you can see, I, I'm, I'm showing here the maximum mutual information part of the uh, painting for different uh, window sizes. Uh, at the end, you can see that uh, the most important, most relevant uh, part from the perspective of complexity are the uh, uh, smile of Mona Lisa and uh, uh, hands. OK, now you can see here uh, for the composition seven, uh, the same uh, uh, we are computing the complexity. Uh, um, OK, I go. Uh, on this kind of image, which is the uh, here I represent the Salis entropy uh, and the difference with uh, a shuffled painting uh, that it is possible to separate uh, from uh, the two painting distribution. Again, uh, a comparison with the uh, saliency maps uh, of uh, the same paintings. And uh, OK, I'll go uh, on. In this case, the, uh, I'll show you that uh, the trend is similar for the chrominance. Uh, just to say something regarding the meta learning. Uh, in meta learning, we have an inner loop of basic machine learning, which solves a specific task through standard data fitting, and an outer loop that updates the inner algorithm to improve a meta objective. Few shot learning is an example. Uh, basically, um, we use here meta learning for solving uh, some problems. For example, the extraction of patterns from one artist's paintings can be beneficial for other artists' work analysis. Uh, let's say, if I'm studying Kandinsky, can I use the same patterns for other? Uh, authors, uh, for example, Piet Mondrian. Uh, this kind of paradigm can overcome uh, typical drawbacks of uh, deep learning, in particular data scarcity, classes imbalance, uh, computational bottlenecks, poor generalization, and uh, performance on new tasks. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the, the case of our work, we are using an external uh, an outer loop in which we use the measure of complexity in order to help the classification. 
in particular, uh, the, it is possible to use other data complexity measures, of course, for pattern recognition. We are presenting uh, this uh, kind of measure. Just some slide, uh, but I have no time for the uh, presenting the model agnostic meta learning and the uh, what we are using now is evolution, which is the multi-domain model agnostic meta learning in which each specific painting style or author can be interpreted as a domain. In this case, we use the training carried out on a source domain to measure uh, the accuracy and then fine tune the model on a second uh, domain. So giving the possibility to build a bridge from different authors. Of course, there is a, a complex math. You can find it on the slides if you wish. And in conclusion, uh, the meta learning approach can use data complexity measures for pattern recognition. Uh, this approach can mitigate uh, typical drawbacks of DL techniques. Can, uh, it is possible to identify and characterize meaningful patterns through uh, engineered features, in particular, we present the artistic complexity. And the final embedded vector, which is generated, for example, from CNN for classification, can be augmented, assisted in the logic of meta learning by the outer loop information. Uh, for example, uh, if we have not uh, so much data labeled or uh, we have a generalization error. Of course, the, there are other approach regarding the generative learning. Uh, I'm concluding with presenting the, the second edition of the book of Elsevier. Uh, we are prepared with other colleagues, among which Cesare Alipi from the Politecnico of Milano. So thank you very much for your kind patience. Thank you, Professor. OK, is there any question from this very interesting talk? No questions? I have one, one curiosity, Professor, about the artistic complexity that yeah. you showed you uh, during the presentation. Um, uh, in the past, I worked on uh, uh, some uh, approaches for measuring the similarity between images uh, based on the extraction of patterns, bidimensional patterns that can be um, can be compared each other in order to understand how much an image is similar to another image. So according to this, I had the opportunity to study different measures coming from the uh, information theory and not only the uh, mutual information, but also, for example, the Kullback Leiber divergence. Yeah. So my question is, do you think that um, changing uh, the measure that you use, for example, using a Kullback Leiber divergence or other information theory measures instead of the uh, mutual information can have some impact uh, on the uh, result that you obtain using the uh, artistic complexity. For example, in the case of La Gioconda, Leonardo da Vinci, you showed us that uh, using the mutual information, you obtain that the most relevant part of Mona Lisa is the hands. I, I, my question is, do you think that using other information theory measures can make some difference in the results, in the final results of your measure? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your question. I, I'll uh, divide my response uh, uh, to your uh, question. Uh, considering two different aspects. Uh, with uh, regard to the meta learning approach, uh, let's say what uh, we uh, I have uh, presented today, um, it is clear that uh, um, there's no specific reason for using uh, uh, artistic complexity uh, for uh, um, uh, 
let's say, helping the classification, for example, through an outer loop of um, uh, with a different uh, object goal. So you can certainly use different measures, uh, uh, also more simple measures. So uh, in this case, uh, the Kalbach Leibler measure, which is a measure of uh, uh, distance of probability, uh, can be certainly used because you, uh, we have uh, of course analyzed the PDF of the different uh, digitized images, and we have seen that there are a lot of differences. For example, I've said that the composition seven of Kandinsky is very unique because as a uniform distribution among all of the cores. It's impossible to uh, understand how it, uh, Kandinsky uh, happened to select exactly the same level of the different cores. But for example, if you use Caravaggio, you should have a, a probability distribution which uh, is, is polarized, biased towards the uh, black color. Uh, because there are large parts of the painting which is uh, um, basically shaded. Uh, regarding the, uh, the second aspect, uh, I have to say that the concept of artistic complexity uh, that we studied for many years has very uh, peculiar, peculiar aspects, in particular the possibility of considering the different uh, uh, sizes of the windows uh, and uh, the, the possibility of measuring the mutual information between uh, the B partitions uh, is uh, important uh, because uh, um, uh, we can have a sort of uh, uh, multiple scale study of the painting. Uh, this is uh, uh, very, very useful, uh, particularly if you use the concept of Salis entropy, in which uh, we, in some parts of the computation, we use the information that uh, distant part of the uh, painting can interact. So the response is uh, yes. Uh, you can use other approaches, like, for example, Kalbock Leibler, which is also well founded. Uh, well founded. Uh, but uh, mm, I think that uh, the artistic complexity is something more with respect to other features, uh, in particular for the possibility of making an ensemble average of uh, the different sites, so a multiple level analysis. Thank you very much. And also this aspect of ensemble is very interesting, but I, I will write to you about that because I realized a measure which is very similar to the concept of ensemble, average ensemble. So um, yeah. we will have the possibility to discuss later. Uh, other questions? Done. So in, uh... Do you want to? Dear Professor Moravito, thank you for this very interesting talk. Good morning. <clears throat> As far as I understand, you want to appreciate uh, the quality of a painting by automatic means. Uh, therefore, we want to introduce objectivity there where uh, it is uh, very well known that the art is subjective by itself because it should be addressed to human people. Mm -hmm. And the interpretation of, a, of, a, of the art is very much dependent on the, the one which uh, regards the, the picture. Uh, am I wrong? Uh, can these quantitative measures, my, in my opinion is that this quantitative measure can go up to a certain limit. Um, am I wrong? So you, you cannot decide everything because it depends on the, on the one who regards a, a painting. Okay. Yes, of course, uh, you are you are right uh, uh, if you are considering uh, the aesthetic value, uh, which is uh, something that is judged subjectively. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, we 
cannot uh, we we do not uh, give a, a qualitative uh, measure of uh, the aesthetic value of the painting. Uh, this is impossible. It's related to human being and to the interaction uh, with the painting, which uh, uh, each of you can have in uh, looking at a painting. So uh, we have a, a, um, an objective quantitative measure uh, that uh, on the other end is used within uh, machine learning and deep learning approaches that are not considering at all the uh, aesthetic quality of a painting. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, our initial objective uh, was a bit uh, wide with respect to the machine learning. We uh, found uh, that some paintings that are considered complex by human beings are have a, a measure of complexity which is very high. So, uh, but uh, we understand that it is uh, difficult to accept somehow uh, without knowing the intricacies of the algorithm. But of course, uh, uh, for your question uh, should uh, uh, refer to the what we are doing. We are using automatic methods. And in automatic methods, the aesthetic value and the subjective judgment is not considered. This is my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, Thank you. Other questions? No questions? OK. We thank again Professor Morabito for his presence here. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it was uh, uh, very a pleasure, uh, a, a pleasure to be with you, and I hope in the future to attend uh, Viper in presence. Thank you very much. It was an honor. And I would like also to thank uh, my colleague uh, uh, Domenico Orsino, which uh, uh, of course uh, uh, suggested uh, uh, my invitation, and of course Professor uh, Amelio. Uh, for having uh, uh, invited the finally uh, this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. See you soon. Bye. Bye. OK, now we have uh, 15 minutes of coffee break. Thank you very much for attending our invited talk and see you after the, the break. Grazie a quello che